Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 81 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about a real-time example where ASP.NET tracing can be used. In part 79 of this video series, we have discussed about the basics of tracing in ASP.NET. And in part 80, we have discussed about writing custom messages to the ASP.NET trace log. In this session, we're going to make use of these concepts to identify the root cause of a performance-related issue. ASP.NET page is very slow. What will you do to make it fast? This is a very common ASP.NET interview question. And in fact, keep in mind, there are several reasons why a page could be slow. We need to identify the root cause of the slowness. But before we do that, keep in mind, it's not generally possible to debug applications on the production server. And the reasons are, usually we don't install the IDEs, that is Visual Studio, SQL Server Management Studio, etc. on the production server. We want to keep the production servers as light as possible. So that's the reason why these IDEs, integrated development environments, are not installed on the production servers. And another reason could be the code on the production server is actually optimized for release builds. It's not practically possible to debug the code that is optimized for release builds. So these are the reasons why we cannot debug the application on the production server. Now, if the slowness is also happening on the development machine, then it's easy to identify the root cause of the issue. All you can do is put a breakpoint, you know, walk through the code, see which method or which event procedure is causing that slowness. It's very easy to identify when the issue is reproducible on the development machine. But keep in mind, in reality, many a times, you know, we will have issues on the production server, but that couldn't be replicated on any of the other environments. So the only way to debug that is, is I mean, to find out the root cause is actually to use tracing. Okay, so anytime we have issues within the development stage, then we can easily identify those on the development machine by debugging. Okay, but then once the code moves to the production server, and if we are not able to replicate that issue on the development machine, then it's not possible to debug it on the development machine. And we know that we don't have the capability of debugging the application on the production server. So that's when we turn on tracing on the production server, identify what is the root cause. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at that in this session. Now, usually when the page is slow, you know, there are two, two things we need to check. The first thing is, is it the database that's causing the issue? Now, your page could be calling SQL queries or stored procedures. So we need to first eliminate, you know, these queries and stored procedures being the cause of the performance problem. Okay, and how do we do that? If you know what are the queries and stored procedures that your page is calling, simply uh, execute those queries and stored procedures you know, in SQL Server Management Studio. If they are running fast enough, then you know it's not a problem with those queries or stored procedures. Another way to quickly identify you know, um, if, if the source of the problem is with queries or stored procedures is by using SQL Profiler. For example, here I have a simple ASP.NET web page here. I have three grid view controls. And what are these grid view controls going to do? They're going to load data from this table in SQL Server. I have a table called TBL employees table, which has got five employees here. And I have three stored procedures here. The first stored procedure, SP get employees, it gets all the employees. If you look at the stored procedure, it's a simple stored procedure. You know, it selects all the columns, and if I execute this, it gets all the employees. And I have another stored procedure, SP get employees by department. It gives me total number of employees by department. And if you look at the select query again, this is very simple and straightforward. I get the department name and the total number of employees within that department. So if I execute this, as you might expect, okay, NHR2 IT3. And along the same lines, I have another stored procedure here which gives me total number of employees by gender, gender and the count of employees. Okay, so obviously if we execute that, we get the total number of employees by gender. So what we are basically doing here is this ASP.NET page that we have, which has got these three grid view controls, it's gonna invoke those three stored procedures and display all the employees, total employees by department and total employees by gender. 
no it's going to display that like that so obviously since this web form is displaying these details i know it could be invoking these three stored procedures but if you're not sure what sql queries are stored procedures you know is the page calling then what you can do is you can turn on sql profiler okay so but let's quickly look at the code so if you look at the code that i have here you know when i run this web form on the page load all this data is being loaded so on the web form load event I have, you know, get all employees method invoked, get employees by gender and get employees by department. And if you look at these methods, they are very simple. Get all employees is going to get all these employees. And if you look at that, all this method does is it's going to call another function called execute stored procedure. So I have this function. I'm not going to show the code for this at, at this point of time. Um, we'll talk about that in just a bit. So I have this execute stored procedure method. For now, understand that this stored this method is going to execute a stored procedure and return the data as data set. So if you pass in SP get employees, this method will execute that stored procedure and return the data, you know, as a data set, which we are using as the data source for the grid view control and you're calling the data bind method okay since we have three stored procedures these three methods are calling those three stored procedures and then these three methods are being invoked in the page load okay so it's as simple as that now the problem here is you no know, it's a very simple page but still when i run this look at that when i run this it's actually loading and loading and loading it's taking a lot of time just to retrieve the data and display it still it is not so finally it came so definitely there is some performance issue here it's taking more than five to six seconds okay so how do we identify the root cause of the performance issue and keep in mind this problem is not reproducible on local machine it's happening only on the production server okay so we need to identify that all right now First, we need to eliminate the queries being the source of the problem. One way is to run these queries here manually within SQL Server Management Studio. Or the, the other thing is you can actually use SQL Profiler. So I'm going to use SQL Profiler here. You know, go to Tools and select SQL Profiler and click Connect. And then you will have this trace window. Click Run there. The trace message will start. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this page once again. So whatever are the queries that are issued to the SQL Server from this web form will now be logged within the profiler. Okay, so once the page is loaded, we can stop the trace. And to do that, use this pause button. And within this, you can see the procedures. Now, for example, the procedures that we are looking for are SP get employees, SP get employees by department, SP get employees by gender. So I can find them there. So we have SP get employees by gender. And if you look at the duration, it looked less than zero milliseconds. Okay, similarly, SP get employees by department, that also took less than zero seconds. And then maybe SP get employees that took less than zero millisecond. Okay, so the queries or the stored procedures are not the source of the problem here. Okay, so then what is the source of the problem? How do we identify that? So we know that it's the application code which is causing the issue. So I'm gonna go to my code and I'm gonna turn tracing on. And how do we set tracing on? I just go to the page directive and set the trace element to true. So trace is equal to, to true. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead and run this. And if you remember, the trace message will actually show how long each event is taking to be processed. We have discussed about this one in, in part 79 of this video series. So if you look at this one, these are the page level events. Okay, all the events are executing fine, but then there is one event here, which is the page load, begin load and end load. Look at that. The end load event, it's almost taking seven seconds there. So this is the duration, seven seconds. So most of the work is being done in page load and page load is actually consuming most of the time. Okay, now if I look at the code in the page load event of this web form, okay, there are three methods. Which of these three methods are causing the issue? Okay, so how do I identify that? If you remember, we can write custom messages to the trace log using trace.1 and trace.write methods. Okay, so let's write, you know, 
the custom messages but if you look at the default trace that I get I don't know you know now it only says me the problem is within the load event but then within the load event which piece of code is causing the issue I don't know so we have to identify that and how do we identify that we can actually use the trace method you know the one method or write method I'm going to use the one method because that writes the messages in red color and it will be easy to identify so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say get all employees started meaning at this point get all employees started and then I'm going to say completed so now on the trace we will we will know how long is this method call taking okay similarly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that for the rest of the methods okay so let's do that for completed as well but then this is going to be get employees by gender so let's copy that there and along the same lines let us copy it here and finally get employees by department basically what we are trying to do here is identify you know the times taken for these methods to complete their work okay so now let's go ahead and run this now so we have this now so when we run this we will get the times so we will make the modifications like this to the code and then probably deploy it to the production server to identify the root cause because we'll have the trace messages written so now if I scroll down here look at that get employees started and completed if you look at the time it, it took less than you know one second these are in milliseconds by the I mean less than second and then if you look at get employees by gender that is what is taking time okay so if you look at that most of the time is spent in get employees by gender okay so let's look at that method so if I look at this get employees by gender I right click that go to definition that's the method and that method is calling this execute stored procedure I right click on that and say go to definition and this execute stored procedure if you look at that okay because in get employees by gender I don't have much of the code all it's doing is you know using the output of this method as the data source for the grid view and calling data bind so something should be happening within this execute stored procedure okay so if I look at this now look at that we are passing in the SP name and then what's happening here this is the regular ADO.NET code I'm not going to get into the details of the ADO.NET code here okay but then we have one if condition here if SP name is equal to SP get employees by gender which is what is being passed from this method SP get employees by gender we are saying thread dot sleep somebody you know put this code here which is causing the issue okay so now we are able to identify the root cause because we know which piece of code is actually causing that issue okay and now you will remove this code build the application deploy it to the production you know it should solve the problem you know on the other hand it might be there only on the production server maybe you know somebody put that code there accidentally that's not present in development machine that's why we may not have the issue on the development machine but it's there only on the production server but but the idea here is to identify the root cause and we were able to do that easily using tracing in spite of not being able to debug it on the production server okay and if queries are slow you know there are several query optimization techniques you know check if there are indexes to help the query select only the required columns avoid select star check if there is a possibility re to reduce the number of joins if possible use the no lock statement on your select statements and check if there are curses and if you can easily replace them with joins and on the other hand if it's the application which is causing the issue we turn the tracing on and we have seen how to identify which method or which piece of code is actually causing the issue on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day